Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Plenty to talk about here for your Thursday night game. Hope you're having a cracker Friday there. We got the Eels feed the Broncos, and I did say it was probably going to go one of either way, and most likely the Eels way, probably a 20-point or 30-point win, or a 20 or 30-point loss, and obviously ended up being a lot higher than the Broncos would have thought, that's for sure, and I can't believe they actually have a chance of falling out of the eight. It's absolutely incredible that the Raiders, if they win this week, will be ahead of the Broncos, so, and all the way down to ninth, when that was second, second and third there for a great portion of the season, and really crazy how it's worked out, because they were winning games without Carrigan, Haas, Reynolds, Capewell, uh, also Cobo, for example, you know, it was absolutely crazy that they were doing that. And then now they've just completely fallen off a cliff. So I'll say that they're in a worse, way worse position than Eels because Eels actually half a chance of you know, getting fifth or fourth. So awesome work from them. Big, big games from Gutho, Papali, Lane, Moses was great. Sivo obviously did a great job as well. That top five there in the point scoring is, you know, had terrific games out there as well. Gutho, two tries, two try assists. He has six offloads, five tackle breaks, 190 meters, just doing everything across the park. And this is what he can do. He's just been so inconsistent in terms of his fantasy scoring. You see that 94 is in the average now, and he's only averaged 43 for the season. So very, very annoying. But if you picked him up, you have the 4.7% that have him, then you're absolutely cheering. We got a lovely try from Dummy Half from Isaiah Papali'i, and we had the try assist as well. So he had a great game doing his job, averaging 63 for the season. He's been a spectacular pickup for everyone, along with Mr. Sean Lane, who bounced back nicely from his low 40s score last week and picked up a 75. So for him to get that in not even a full game of footy, 67 minutes there was awesome. He had the line break with the try assist, 13 tackle breaks, four offloads uh, to go along with you know limited tackles because they won so well and 150 meters. So Laney, awesome. Like made so much cash this year. You see that 219 is going to be more after this week. It's just slightly. I think he's break even 60 odd 70 uh but yeah crazy year for him and will he continue to be a gun next year i'd say he would especially if probably is moving along they're gonna have to fill that spot whether it's madison or whoever ends up playing there uh laney's still gonna be their go-to guy so he's been he's been awesome let's see if it's just a one-hit wonder or it's a um yeah it's gonna happen week to week from year, week to week year to year from here on moses 52 so welcome back for him did have the uh field goal at the end of the half, we had eight goals and one try. So a bit of everything for him. A few negatives, but nothing crazy there. Uh, limited on attacking stats for, for breaks and uh, off offloads. But overall, uh, a good return couple of games for him. And could have been bad. Almost had a bit of an ankle issue, which he got out of, thankfully. Uh, Sivo is 50 as well, if you own him. I don't think many do. Payne Hass is the next one. Thank goodness he played 80 minutes because the 14 at half time was horrendous and you see there he's got 36 tackles which is fine three misses yeah is what it is he had three at half time so definitely a much better second half but only two tackle breaks no offloads only 105 meters i do understand that they didn't have the ball a lot just for the fact that you know eels are putting on so many tries but thank goodness i said he got the 80 otherwise you you know 80 minutes otherwise he would have picked up a 30 odd uh, score there we're going to get a nice discount from Payne House at the back end of this year, at, you know, at the start of next year. You know, a good chance he's under 700. So for those that are keen on him next year, under a 50 average, I think that's where he's going to be priced at. Uh, absolutely licking your lips uh, to start off with him next year. So I'm already thinking about next year. If you're in the Discord, you would have seen that last night. That I was mentioning that. Yeah, Madison as well. He's going to be a fairly cheap, you know, with a few lower scores to at uh, the back end of the year. You got Panasini in there, 45 was solid. Dylan Brown, 44. So again, not uh, yeah, you'd hope for a lot more in this type of game when they score a lot of points. But usually when you're getting dominated, it's very much spread across the floor. And one or two guys dominating. And this one was Gutho. And obviously the outside, um, you know, the, the edges with Papali'i and Leno. Uh, but yeah, did his job, really. Yeah, you can't expect too much more. Tackles aren't going to be that high. Uh, a couple of negatives, but no real attacking stats for him. So that's that. Yeah, Jensen Opacek. Solid ones as well. Terps, and then going down from there, Billy Walters got 67 minutes, so you're hoping for some more from him. But again, a middle, uh, getting some missed tackles and you know, not a lot of ball, wasn't able to do too much. He kicked a fair bit of dummy half, 64 meters, kind of did his thing. Uh, obviously moved from, sorry, and then, sorry, he ended up coming in and playing for Reynolds. So did his job on that edge, I should say, sorry, rather than as backup hooker this week. Reedy. 67 minutes to even make it even better and 25 points. Thank goodness I chucked him in the loop spot. So I'm not going to play him and hopefully Cola scores better and Pole 
We have to play them in instead of Reedy, but he's going to be at a massive discount next year as well. And I personally won't be jumping on him, but you watch everyone will jump on him next year with the dogs and he'll come out and absolutely kill it. But 29 tackles, four misses, ran for 40, one tackle break. Just giving out early ball, I suppose. But yeah, not good in fantasy. He's been the one of the shockers of the year, to be honest. But he'll be down about 180K from his starting price. Ezra Mam, 24, better than last week, something. Pereira played full 80. Palacio got 20 if you needed to take his score. And Hosting got on for 36 minutes. And again, did okay. But five missed tackles was what killed him. Kobe Hetherington going down early along with Reynolds. Uh, and Arthur getting 13 minutes. So if you had Reynolds, you're absolutely hating it at the moment. You're off fantasy. Uh, and there's a chance he doesn't play next week. He has to go through the 10-day protocol. They play within nine. He has to get a specialist approval, I believe, to be able to play next week. So... That's Reynolds. He'll be really cheap for next year as well. So very interesting times in that first game. I hope you enjoyed the game at least. If you're an Eels fan, well done to you. If you're a Broncos fan, you'll be hating it. Uh, they're in a bit of strife from for yeah even making the finals. But it's going to be interesting how it all shakes out next week. And hopefully there's a, a few upsets. There's a few bits and pieces that happen. And we'll have a fun weekend. See you later, team. Enjoy the next few days.